I'd like to call to order the Kern Cog or the Transportation Planning Policy Committee meeting of the of the Kern Cog. It is October this 19th. This conference will now be recorded at I around approximately 6:30. The first item is the Pledge of Allegiance, and it's going to be led by Councilmember Gilbert Reyna. Salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Roll call, please. I own. Present. Arias. Present. Couch. Here. Helton. Blades. Crump. Here. Warney. Here. Cryer. Here. Navarro. Here. Crichton. Here. Para. I'm here. Prout. Reyna. Here. Flores. Here. Phil Smith. Here. Vasquez. Here. And Murillo. Here. Thank you. Next item is public comments. This portion of the meeting is reserved for persons to make a comment on any item that is under the jurisdiction of the committee but not on the agenda this evening. Is there anyone here that would like to make a public comment? Seeing none. Next item is item four, the consent agenda. Anyone in the public ask, would like to make a comment on any item or ask any questions about any item on the consent agenda? Questions from any board members? Motion to approve. You have a motion? And a second. And a second. Get a roll call vote. Murillo. Yes. Vasquez. Yes. Phil Smith. Yes. Flores. Yes. Reyna. Yes. Para. Yes. Crichton. Yes. Navarro. Yes. Cryer. Yes. Warney. <clears throat> yes. Crump. Yes. Couch. Yes. Ion. Aye. And Arias. Aye. Next item is item five. It's an unmet needs public hearing. Mr. Akimi. Good evening, um, members of the board. Um, Current Council of Government annually holds a public hearing to identify any unmet transit needs and those that are reasonable to meet. At, and this is the, ten, the last of 10 hearings held this year throughout the county. The Social Services Transportation Advisory Committee has reviewed input from the prior meetings. Prior to making any allocation from the Transportation Development Act funds to uses other than public transportation or pedestrian and bikeways, Bikeway facilities, Kern Cog is legally required under California Public Utilities Code 99401.5 to determine whether unmet transit needs have been identified when it, within its jurisdiction. Through newspaper advertisements, members of the public were requested to provide their input. Public input was also obtained through public hearings held in the city's rural communities of Kern, Golden Empire Transit District, and the city of Delano. Kern Cog Social Services Transportation Advisory Committee reviewed the results of these public hearings. Get the large UZA operator of population above 200,000 held its unmet transit needs public hearing on March 21st, 2023. The GET board found that there are no unmet transit needs that are reasonable to meet within its service area. 
The city of Delano, the, the county's small UZA with population above 50,000 but below 200,000, held its unmet transit needs public hearing on March 6, 2023. The Council of Delano found that there are no there were no unmet transit needs that were reasonable to meet within its service area. Kern Transit held its public hearing on May 23, 2023. The Kern County Board of Supervisors found that there were no unmet transit needs that were reasonable to meet. The cities of Arvin, California City, Maricopa, McFarland, Ridgecrest, Shafter, Taft, Tehachapi, and Moscow held unmet transit needs public hearings between February and July of 2023. None of the city reported unmet transit needs that were reasonable to meet. At its August 9th, 2023 meeting, the Social Services Transportation Advisory Committee reviewed, its, it reviewed a countywide analysis of unmet transit needs provided by Kerncog staff, and the members of the SSTAC determined that there were no unmet transit needs that were reasonable to meet within the Kern County. Tonight, the public hearing for the 2023-24 unmet transit needs assessment and determination at which time Kern Cox should decide through resolution one of the following. One, there are no unmet transit needs, or two, there are no unmet transit needs that are reasonable to meet, or three, there are no unmet transit needs that, including those that are reasonable to meet. At this time, I ask the chairman to open public hearing, receive com comments, and close the public hearing. <laughs> I might not have been here. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, all right, I'll open the public hearing and ask if there's anyone here that would like to give us any comments on the unmet transit needs. Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing and return it to any other comments that you need to make. Okay. The action requested is that the Transportation P Planning Policy Committee to, is to approve a finding of that there are no unmet transit needs that are reasonable to meet within Kern County and authorize the chair to sign resolution number 2321. Thank you. Board members? <coughs> Questions? Motions? So moved. Second. You have a motion and a second. Need a roll call vote, please. Arias. Aye. Ion. Aye. Couch. <coughs> yes. Helton. Yes. Crump. Yes. Warney. Yes. Cryer. Yes. Crichton. Yes. Para. Yes. Reyna. Aye. Flores. Yes. And Phil Smith. Yes. And Vasquez. Aye. And Murillo. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. That takes us. Oh, you to me. <laughs> switched. <laughs> Item six is the Federal Transportation Improvement Program Amendment, draft amendment number nine. Ms. Pacheco. Good evening. Amendment number nine includes revisions to the non motorized program. The public review period ends October 20th. The Kern Cog Executive Director will consider approval of the amendment on October 23rd. State and federal approval is required. At this time, I ask that the Chair please open the public hearing, allow for public comment, and then close the public hearing. Thank you. So we'll open the public hearing and ask if there are anyone here, is there anyone here that will give us any comments? Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. Thank you. We'll return to the staff. No action on this tonight, right? Correct. Next item would be the Caltrans report, item eight, because there's nothing for item seven. Caltrans. You and me, Kristen. Okay. okay. You bet. I just turned it off. Uh, good evening, Chair, members of the board. Thank you, Michael Navarro, Caltrans District Six. A few updates. Did want to talk about Clean California. So the announcements for the Clean California local grant program were finally announced. Like I mentioned, this was a smaller pot. Um, we felt we were very successful in the district. We received six grants total. Uh, very competitive pot this year. I do want to congratulate Maricopa. Um, their Clean California grant was awarded an amount of $2.1 million going to Maricopa. Uh, there were 42 projects awarded statewide with 230 applications. So kudos. It was a very competitive program. So congratulations to Maricopa. 
Uh, did want to let everyone know that the we're expecting NOFO for the raise grants to be coming out here in the fall. So um, our headquarters folks did send out a request for any potential letter of support or partnership projects local agencies are interested in. Uh, the requests are due by October 31st. So if there are any projects you're considering, um, either go through that smart sheet process or, or feel free to reach out to me or my team. Um, we just recently last month announced the 23-24 uh, Caltrans planning grants, and this was our probably most successful year in District 6. We were recipients of about over $5 million in planning grants coming to uh, District 6. Um, in terms of ones awarded here in Kern County, so we did award one to Kern Cog and one to City of Shafter. And just following the heels of um, announcing those grants, we're already doing the call for projects for 24-25. So we are having a grant workshop um, that we're doing jointly with District 9. On October 26 so it'll be a hybrid meeting that we'll have at our district office in Fresno um, there's about 53 million dollars available in planning grants and this one's really heavily loaded towards climate adaptation much like last year so there's 32 million dollars in climate adaptation uh, grant so if you have something that fits in that box then I would encourage you to pursue it because pretty much I think most of the ones we had in our district last year were successful in getting awarded so um, reminders and advice have been forwarded to all your uh, all the member agencies for the upcoming planning grant workshop and if you have a you know an application you want to workshop with us uh, or my staff's happy to meet with anyone to discuss accordingly um, in terms of projects the uh, stay route 99 rehab project still underway um, currently working on the number two lanes in progress and we expect that project to complete be complete by uh, December of this year uh, Santa Fe roundabout that project is the design phase that project should be ready to advertise uh, June of next year and looking for a, a spring construction of 2025. The uh, State Route 46 Expressway Segment 4B, um, just putting together a bunch of items to wrap up. So that project is scheduled for completion in December of this year. Uh, the Maricopa Highway, the rehab project, that's nine miles of pavement restoration uh, from State Route 33 to Capello Street. Uh, that project was to get its construction allocation this month's CTC meeting, and we're expecting that project to advertise this winter. In Taft, the left turn channelization project, uh, that project is about 85% complete. There was some electrical work that we're working through. Um, that project should be completed by November of this year. Uh, on Stair Out 119, Pumpkin Center Drive rehab project. That project is currently in design the right-of-way phase. We anticipate to start right-of-way by spring of next year and then be ready to advertise that project. Uh, a couple of roundabout projects. The 184 Sunset Roundabout project, as you know, is, is open to traffic. There are a few punch lists and electrical work items that we're resolving, but that project should be complete by December of this year. And the 223 184 Roundabout as well, open to traffic. Still wrapping up some punch list items, but we expect to have that project all buttoned up by November 15th. Uh, lastly, some of the Clean California projects. So we still are working with a contractor on addressing some of the irrigation issues on the, uh, the media and pedestrian work we're doing out there. We do still want to have a groundbreaking uh, ceremony out there coupled with a tree planting event. So once we get those irrigation items addressed. And the other two uh, projects in Bakersfield, we have the 204 um, road diet project as well as the Garza Circle of 204 undercrossing improvements. Uh, working through bids, my understanding is the for the road diet project, the bids did come in high. Um, so we are um, working on the scope of that, but obviously committed to getting that road diet underway. But we might have to advertise that one again because the bids came in about $1.5 million over, unfortunately. With that, that completes my update. Happy to answer any questions. Board. Good evening, Mike. Uh, uh, a few meetings back, I uh, mentioned the uh, rough road uh, starting around westbound 58, around Tower Line Road into town. And then you said that they were, uh, were going to have some blanket patch work done in the area, which they did. And it looks like they've completed and, and demobilized. Uh, is there any more work to be done? Because the very worst section was the westbound about a half mile or so pr prior to Tower Line. And then beyond Tower Line before Comanche, where it turns from Portland cement uh, roadway to asphalt, that roadway is just, it was the worst part of the whole section. And they didn't do that, but they had done some further east up around General Beale and that big blanket patches, and it turned out great. Right. So yeah, just blanket. curious. Yeah, no, correct. They 
All right, I'll let people know. Okay. So, okay. Thank you. Uh, Michael, um, on um, October the 17th, uh, Tuesday, uh, members of the community and uh, myself, a member of the council, um, city staff, we did a uh, Caltrans walk assessment uh, for Highway 43 mm -hmm. and Highway 46. While many things were identified as deficient, there is something that I wanted to bring to your attention. Maybe you can um, get it done quickly. Um, there is a turning lane, a dedicated turning lane, um, that turns on to Becker Street from Highway 46. And um, that lane is frequently used by through th traffic. Uh, and then they realize you know, that they cannot continue on, and so they m quickly move on to the highway, creating <clears throat> problems. And so I was talking to some of the representatives from Caltrans, Bill, I forget Bill's last name. Bill Bigby. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said that that would be an easy solution by adding a bike lane as a buffer. Okay. And, and so uh, to me it seems like it would be something that could be done rather quickly and, and alleviate that problem. So if you could perhaps follow up on that, I would greatly appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we do look forward to doing those walk assessments and happy to do them in any community. Um, they, they did report back, so they uh, and let me know they did the walk assessment. And I know they're working on a, a final draft report with recommendations. We, we've commonly used those as tools to start scoping future projects. Right. But if it's something like a quick fix, then happy to coordinate with our maintenance folks about it. If it's a simple striping, we can go out there and achieve. Thank you. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. And that would be from uh, Central Avenue to Beckett Street. What's the name of the second? <coughs> Sorry. It's uh, <coughs> Central Avenue and Beckett's B E C K E S. Beckett. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Chairman Couch, I have, oh, I didn't realize. Sorry, Aaron. Go ahead. Michael, can you um, keep me informed about the Union Avenue or 204 when uh, you make a decision whether you're going to rebid or get more money? Yeah, absolutely. And that, and that one, my understanding is they are going to re have to re-advertise that one. So for sure? That was my, was talking with Siobhan, the PM, yeah. I think the bid came in $1.5 million over, so they're looking at scope. The, the road die is definitely staying intact. And then... Um, Plus, some of the Caltrans furnished items put it about $2 million over, so they sound like they are going to have to re-advertise before this year's over. So the process will take at least three months to bid, award. Okay, yeah, thank you. And, and which, which obviously puts us in a tight time frame for delivery, obviously, because we have to have those done by June 30th of uh, 2024 for these projects. So, um, But we'll get a more thorough update from Siobhan as far as the schedule for re-advertising for you. Okay, I, I had a call from... Um, a local television and print reporter this week, and I referred him to Christian. Your, uh, Christian Lukens. Thank okay. You. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, one more thing, Michael, just a point of clarification. This uh, lane, the Sterling Lane, is on the south side of the highway. Okay. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you. Board Member Parra? Uh, <laughs> that was one of the questions I had, but Mr. Hakimi had just said. The other is I've been out of town a couple weeks. I haven't gone down Union. Is that Hawks? signal mm -hmm. is it activated now yeah the hawk signal was activated i think I, probably about two months ago i thought because i think i announced it at the last board meeting i know they're having some software issues initially but it mm -hmm. was fully it was fully activated and we actually there were some button up items they were finishing up but uh end of september we accepted that job was fully complete and i know we are actually scoping an additional one on 204 i think at 10th street this one's at 8th street right this hawk I know we were looking at one at potentially at 10th in concept currently, so um, we've been pretty pleased. I have some pictures I can send you of it, uh, okay. operational everything. Thank you. Mm -hmm. For the Rowan. workshop on October 26th, do you know the name of it? Um, it's the Caltrans Sustainable Transportation Planning Grant Workshop. Happy to forward you a flyer or share with you after it's the meeting if you like. Okay. It's in our folders, by the way, right? There's information on it. Thank you. Highway 184. <laughs> what is, uh, it's been delayed. We're talking about weed, the weed packed section, right? 184. Yes. Uh, that's the one between Dunsmere and Breckenridge Road. Yes. Yeah, that one, uh, the project, yeah, still designed right away phase, working on the right away, which I think was supposed to be in, we're expected to be advertised uh, fall of next year, having issues with the railroad. So, M Michael, can I add, there, there was a project on 184 that received additional funds today at the 
CTC meeting. So is that the, the Lamont, uh, the, um, there's two of them. There's two 184 projects. So the one through Weed Patch, the one delayed. The morning, the morning drive rehab one, I think, is the one that received funds. Okay. Um, there's two sections. Right. Are they both shop programs? Right. Shop they're both programs. shop, with, and they have a lot of complete streets elements we're adding to us. So it's more than just a rehab, doing some some sidewalk gaps. and. So the first one range. goes from where to where? The first one goes from 0.1 miles north of Edison Highway to just north of Chase Avenue. Okay, I'm talking about the one that's south of it. Yeah, so that one, the, the initial one that we were just referring to, that one bid started in May, so construction starting in January on that one. Then the, the one you're referring to, the southern one, is expected to advertise in fall of next year. But what, what's the issue with the railroad? Um, that's the one that has the issue with the railroad, right? That's the one that's having issues with the railroad. Um, see. <clears throat> Let me read up the notes. Maybe we could talk after the meeting real quick and give okay. you more of an yeah. update. Could we also set up a time that you and I could, and with Aaron, could just talk? Sure. I don't expect you to come down for it, but. Yeah, absolutely. Zoom or whatever. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Thank you. Anyone else? Member, oh, wait. Executive Director's report. Oh, I'm sorry. The other district that's here tonight. Where's the little park? District 9. <laughs> Good evening. Kirsten Helton with District 9. Um, I have just a few things. First, for project updates, the CTC this week voted to combine the Keene Rehab with the um, truck climbing lane location 2. Um, so both of those will be moving forward combined into final design and right of way. Um, it doesn't really change the schedule for us. The next vote for the CTC will be the, for the construction funding, which is planned in December of 25, with construction planned for 2026. So that was good news. Um, Freeman 3, Cap M, the construction has been completed on State Route 14, north of Red Rock Canyon. Um, so that one's done and very smooth. The um, Highway 58, uh, rest area sewage system repair. The, we finally received pumps at the distributor's facility about four weeks ago to move forward with that repair. Now the contractor has submitted a request to increase the funds needed though to put those in, so we're in the process of getting those extra funds and work will proceed uh, as soon as those are received. The Tehachapi Maintenance Station construction started on the new crew building. The estimated completion is 11 of 2024. Mojave Bypass paving operation on the eastbound lanes of State Route 58, just west of exit 165. Um, construction was completed as of the end of September. As far as Clean California, the city of Ridgecrest received a Clean California grant for the Inua Kern Transfer Hub Xeriscaping Project in the amount of $187,000, so congratulations. And the Rosamond Interchange Xeriscape, which has been under construction, is basically completed with a few little items left to complete. Um, I'll just re reiterate the District 6 and 9 Sustainable Communities Grant Workshop that Michael mentioned. We'd like to make sure that uh, our Eastern Kern folks participate as well. Then the Ridgecrest sewer system, sewer replacement on State Route 178 East between Gemstone Street and French Avenue. Um, crews will continue to work on from Monday through Friday between seven and four, so drivers could be experiencing brief delays in that area. And then systemic pedestrian safety improvements on State Route 202 between Woodford to Hatchapi Road and Tucker Road in the city of Tehachapi are taking place uh, <laughs> Monday through Thursday from 8 to 6 with potential delays there as well. And that concludes my report. I'll be happy to take any questions. Good evening, Kirsten. Hi. All right, I need some clarification. We were yes. at C CTC this morning. And about noon, we item 98 was for construction funding, not what you said. It was funded for the rehab and then the 91 million on top of that for the construction of segment two of the truck climbing lanes. And then additional funding was in there for the uh, habitat undercrossings. Right. So my understanding is for construction funding. I think it was for the moving forward with the uh, final design and right of way and the combination, the combining of the two projects. 
does that cost and cover construction that we received no, today? No, we have to go back to, for construction funds at the end of 2025. There's no, there will not be an ask for more than the 225. No, no. <laughs> yeah, right. Right. We've got the, we've got the whole money lined out. We just have to get through this phase with this amount of money and then get the rest of it then. But it's. I'm confused. Yeah. Uh, the, the, there's no. The, the, the money is in place as of today, to get to the end of the, pro, end of construction of the project. Correct. That clarifies it. Yes. So Sorry. <laughs> we're going to be announcing some important, you know, on that project. So yes. Yes. We, this we, funds um, it to the end of construction. Yes, it does. So we got approved for both projects and the increase and the whole, the whole ball of wax. So, yes. yes. And we just wanted to say thank you to District 9 for the environmental that allowed us to go and, and ask for the, the funding that was received for Kern uh, today. So thank that you. was yes. really really nice to have yeah we're really excited to combine these two this is a big project now yes it is uh, in that vein uh, so there was leftover money from the environmental uh, five million that we had allocated I understand can that can we what's the status of the environmental now for uh, it would be segment one yes segment one so can we w when will that start or so because on a, on a Zoom meeting we had a few months back with the director and the, uh, Senator Grove and others on the, on the call, there was going to be some collaboration between the District 6 and uh, District 9 regarding, you know, collaboration on if, if one couldn't do, didn't have the manpower to do it, right. I think dis District 6 said they did. So uh, is that still in the works or no, we, so we want to. We've got some momentum. It's very exciting. You can tell I'm very excited about this. Uh, so where would we be uh, for the next step? Because we don't want to just wait until the end of construction and then start doing another environmental if we could do it now. I think I have to admit, I think we've fallen down a little bit on the collaboration, and I apologize for that. Mike and I have been talking today. I think there are some steps we need to take to figure out whether we can get that leftover money um, allocated to this project, and and then we need to talk about who's going to do the work. It'll probably, it's looking at this point more like it will be resting with District 6 because District 9 just doesn't have the capacity to take it on. But we That was to, the, the conversation yeah. we had on the Zoom meeting. Yeah, we and need to finalize that and then figure out how to get the funding in place so that we can move forward as well. I know we can do it because if we've done this big heavy lift, <laughs> sure we can do we it. We could do this <laughs> next one. So we just have to figure out how. <laughs> yes. So uh, can we get like quarterly updates? You know, uh, you know. Sure. We want. We've got people. Just people are very excited that this is moving forward because we now have a a construction timeline versus just waiting to see for reports and environmentals yes. and everything else. So yes. this is anyway. Thank you for everything. Thank you. Is that all you have? That's all I have. Okay. Any other questions? Seeing none, the next item is the executive director's report, I believe. Mr. Hakimi. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So uh, I'll, I'll start a little bit out of order. So uh, Councilman Smith uh, was very modest about um, a few things that have happened over the next over the last few years. So, th so this board in uh, <coughs> January of 2021 received uh, some funds at the end of the Trump administration, about $10 million. Um, and w as a board, you decided to put half that money towards the truck climbing lanes to do environmental and half for a, a project in Metro Bakersfield, the, the Hageman flyover. If this board had not done that, um, early 2021, we would not be where we are today. And and uh, thank you to Caltrans District 9, specifically to Kirsten for getting that environmental document done quickly, uh, ahead of schedule and under budget. And the end result is, is what happened today, where, where we have assurance that we now have enough money to build the entire project. We have a commitment from Caltrans to fully fund a project that we collectively 
have been uh, trying to build for 20 plus years. So congratulations and thank you to all of you that were involved. And, and I know Councilman Smith has been involved for literally decades in this, this process. <laughs> You guys are still going to hear from me from time to time. <laughs> I know you're sick of it, but uh, but at least we've passed a milestone here that we can celebrate, I think. So, and to be clarifying, the the money for there's the money for the rehab Caltrans project, correct? From it's in it's like between Tatchby and Caliani, I think, both sides, east and west, and then the the the. It's going to be the funding today was for the second segment of truck climbing lanes, the second of three. So right. for yeah. everyone, you've got from General Beale Road to the top down to Arvin uh, 223. That's segment one, District 6. Uh, correct? Yes. Correct. And then the one we that was uh, funded and awarded today was for segment two, which is from Caliani up over the, the steeper climb and the winding uh, three and a half miles uh, to Hart Flat. And then the next segment is from Keene beyond Broom Road. And that one, and I'll ask you this, the environmental, is that done? And then did that come in under the uh, high-speed rails environmental? The high-speed rails environmental document addressed it somewhat. Um, but not in any great detail. It's enough that we could probably use that document to move forward for grants or funding or things like that, but there will, be, there will need to be more detailed environmental work done before we can move forward with construction. Let's do that. Let's put it all in the mix. Here's my thought. If you've got the, the project for the truck climbing lanes, let's say segment two, and then you're going to do the rehab, I, I would assume the plan would be go ahead and do the truck climbing lane because you're going to have you, – cause, so you don't have it down to one lane for your rehab project. Is that the idea? They'll be combined for construction. That's so what I mean. Yeah, when they're be one being, project. Yes. So yes. it makes a lot of sense. Get three lanes going so you know, you're not down to one lane through right. those areas, which would be yeah. horrible. We don't know yet the order of construction, whether yeah. they'll do that or not. That'll be up to the contractor. But, yeah. Just throwing sense. that out. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. I have a, few, a few more items, Mr. Chairman. Um, so in September, the, from the 10th to the 14th, I was in Washington, D.C. Um, I set s I've sent several of you notes about um, what I did while I was there. One of the things I did was I met with form former Speaker of the House about uh, projects in Bakersfield and around Kern County. Um, he promised promised his support, and he, he is still committed to that. That's spe was Speaker McCarthy, or former Speaker McCarthy. Um, uh, Councilman Smith went over the seat to yesterday. Oh, he, he actually, I didn't mention it. Uh, today and yesterday, uh, Councilman Smith and I and um, several members uh, from Tatchby staff and Bakersfield staff was also there, attended the California Transportation Commission meeting. That's where the actions that um, Councilman Smith were talking about happened. There was also um, an early allocation of uh, about $28 million for uh, a project at 58 and 99, specifically westbound 58 to northbound 99, which is a movement that does not exist today, but will be needed when uh, Centennial opens. It will not, it will not that new movement will not be in place when the freeway opens, but we will likely start construction, and that will be administered by the city of Bakersfield. Um, that is likely to start within the next six months. So we got $28 million two years earlier than uh, we were scheduled to get it. And I want to publicly thank, and uh, Councilman Smith mentioned this, the, the head of Caltrans, Tony Tavares, the head of the CTC, Leanne Eager, who came and visited with us several months ago, and that uh, dinner we had with her paid dividends to the tune of over $100 million just today. It was, so thank you all uh, who attended that meeting and who all reached out to her. Uh, great news. 
also, uh, last month we received notice that we received the largest. Uh, Kirsten, help, or Michael, help me with the $2.65 million grant. Was that a sustainable community grant? It was a sustainable community grant. That was one of the two that I referenced. That was one of the two I referenced earlier. I didn't get in the dollar amount, but yeah, that, of the five, five point three million dollars received in District Six, two point six of it went to that climate adaptation grant for the truck climbing lease study. And our, ours was the largest in the state. Is that correct? I didn't check. It's definitely the largest we ever received in our district for one single grant, but probably. Could be a large state. I have so to verify. Rob is, is shaking his head. Yes. So we were. Okay. I, I trust Rob. I believe him. We received the largest planning grant in the state to to look at not only uh, 58, uh, but the whole area of North Bakersfield, South Shafter, uh, unincorporated area where there is a tremendous amount of uh, distribution centers, industrial development. It started out as a way to coordinate um, Shafter, Kern County, and Bakersfield. And we were successful in getting a, uh, one state grant. Now we received the largest grant in the state to, to look at issues that are important to us. Uh, during the month, I continued to have meetings about 99 and 58, Union Avenue, also known as State Route 204, 7 Standard and 43, safety improvements on 33, um, just uh, this afternoon we had our monthly meeting on State Route 46 uh, and those of you that travel on 46 have noticed um, it's closed just east of the community of Lost Hills. <coughs> it's a, a, a total cl closure. The detour on the south is Lairdo Highway to I-5. That closure is on schedule to be completed before Thanksgiving and that will be the only full closure of 46. Um, for this for this project the project still has seven or eight months months to go but when when we are done and when the contractor is done all of 46 will be four lanes from i-5 to the san luis Obispo county line another project that took us before over thanksgiving no before thanksgiving the the full closure will be lifted there'll still be construction underway for right. seven or eight months and Supervisor Couch, you will certainly be there for the yes. um, ribbon cutting. You were there for the um, groundbreaking. Uh, that concludes my report on this agenda. Aaron, this probably predates you, but I think we were told in the very beginning of the West Side Parkway discussion that it would never have a full interchange with 99, if any. Um, are we, is, does this project you mentioned just before that one give it a full inter, a full interchange? So, so your memory is correct. Okay. Uh, I was around, but I was working for Caltrans at okay. the time. <laughs> <clears throat> and and right, Caltrans not only said no, but but hell no. Uh, so the 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 seventh and the eighth movement. When two freeways come together, there's eight movements if you count them up. <clears throat> when when. Centennial Carter or West Side Parkway, whatever you call it, opens up in a few months, there will be two movements that are missing. Those two missing movements are eastbound 58 to northbound 99. That's the one we received $28 million for today. And the city of Bakersfield will put out to bid in the next few months. It will likely take at least a year to build. So that money is in hand. A few months we'll have a contractor on board the last movement, which is southbound 99 to westbound 58, which if, you, if you're familiar with Bakersfield, will sort of tuck behind Kaiser, if you know where that is. Mm -hmm. That one we received a few months ago, uh, a grant uh, from the CTC, from Leanne, a woman who, for $9.3 million to do the design and right-of-way. and. Um, the TTAC, uh, the committee that advise, advises this board, is in the process of developing the STIP, and I believe uh, we were updated this month on consent on that. We are proposing, and this will eventually come back to you, to add an additional $25 million to, to that eighth movement. That's a very long answer. So Caltrans position was, Hell no, it will not connect to 99 because 
there there was problems, but uh, we've worked with them over the last two decades and figured out how to fu fully complete the interchange. It won't be done instantly. It'll take three or four more years, but it will so be done. The message you all should bring back is just go along with us in the beginning because we're going to get there eventually. I didn't say <laughs> <laughs> I recognize all this predates, predates you guys. And I spent a lot of time working on that Centennial Corridor with Aaron. So. Well, thank you both very much. We were, we were post hell no. <laughs> <laughs> Next item is member statements. Board members? Ms. Barra? I don't see Suzanne here tonight, but I just wanted to thank her for and uh, Kern Cog for the, uh, uh, in, there was a bike share, uh, not bike share, uh, it's it, ride share. It's not just bikes. Ride share uh, a couple weeks ago, and um, some of Kern Cog's staff helped to man one of the commuter stands over at Cal State, so we just want to thank them for that and for Suzanne's hard work every year for doing ride share and and all of that type of work that she does so I just wanted to thank you I have uh, something yes. to say um, in the month of October I have committed to riding 300 miles on my bike raising funds for the Wonder Warrior wow. project I have uh, 208 miles in as of uh, yesterday and uh, being out there uh, has made me very aware of the deficiencies we have on our roads regarding uh, bicycle facilities. Um, I took a ride from Wasco to Shafter and uh, the shoulder uh, on Highway 43, both sides of the shoulder are filled with debris. And Michael, maybe this is something I should have addressed with you earlier, but uh, maybe that could be swept uh, to make it easier. After I took that ride, I went the following day trying for another ride in a different direction, and I had a, a blowout. The, both the tube and the tire, the, the sidewall, uh, blow, blew out. And I, I believe that it was because somewhere along the way when I went on Highway 43, uh, something cut the, the sidewall of the tire, and you know, it just took a little bit more distance for it to blow out. F fortunately, I was very close to home, so I just walked back. <laughs> Uh, but I also think that uh, there is a need for um, shoulders uh, on some of those roads that run uh, south-north because we, d we are, Wasco is surrounded by, sort of surrounded by Highway 46, Highway 43, and then uh, if you go to Raleigh Road, that also has shoulders. But I think there should be at least two other roads in between those two so that have shoulders to facilitate uh, movement for bikers. And I'm out there. I have a very um, lighted bike, for lack of a better term. I have put a lot of lights on my bike to make sure that I'm visible. But uh, some uh, drivers out there do not respect bikers, you know. And, and so I know that uh, I'm putting myself in danger by having to ride on those roads. But I see no other, no other option when I'm, I'm riding uh, 20 to 30 miles a day. So... Maybe this is something that this body can consider, you know, spending some money to do that. Thank you. Okay. Seeing no other comments, we'll adjourn the Transportation Planning Policy Committee meeting and we'll open the current Council of Governments meeting. The roll call is the same. First item is public comments. Is there anyone here that would like to make a public comment on any item under the jurisdiction of this committee that is not on our agenda? Seeing none, we'll go to item three, which is the consent calendar. Anyone here have a comment on any item on the consent calendar or a question? Seeing none, we'll go to the board. Questions, comments, or motions? A motion. Second. Councilmember Cryer. Second by Mr. Crump. Roll call. Murillo? Yes. Vasquez? Aye. Phil Smith? Yes. Um, Flores? Yes. Reyna? Yes. Crichton? Yes. Cryer? Yes. Crump? Yes. Couch? Yes. Ion? 
Aye. And Arias. Aye. Thank you. The next item, there are no, do you have an executive director's report? A few items, uh, okay. Mr. Chairman, and I'll, I'll leave this one for you. Okay. In your folder uh, this evening is um, Current Council of Government's Progress Report, uh, the October 2023 edition, timeline covering October all the way through February of 2024, the Kern EV Stations Blueprint 2024 flyer. I think this was mentioned earlier today. Uh, I think Supervisor Couch, you may have mentioned this, that um, sustainable transportation planning grant program flyer. Current Active Transportation Alliance October Community Rides, and please take a look at that. There's rides all over the county um, that are being funded through a grant we see we received through the state, and uh, Bike Bakersfield is administering that project. Another um, flyer related to the Current Active Transportation Alliance and our ATP project. flyer from San Joaquin's ACE Amtrak and wow this is it's already October a, um, a flyer for the 2023 regional awards they're due in early December so believe it or not we need to start thinking about that so please uh, take a look at the flyer if you have um, any ideas that you just may want to run by us? You can Do you have a date for the event? Is it usually in March? It's the first Thursday in March. Okay. And Ms. Napier uh, and others are available to ask questions like, hey, has this person or organization received an award in the past? Uh, what do you think of this idea? We're, we're willing, uh, certainly willing to help and give, you, give anyone guidance on that. Subject to any of your questions, Mr. Chairman, that concludes my report. Did you want to mention this first before I did? Uh, it also in our, our uh, folders tonight was uh, a short obituary on Jess Ortiz. Jess was uh, a member of Kern Cog at least once. He was a longtime member of the Arvin City Council and the mayor there, also a Kern County Fire Captain. Uh, he passed away back in uh, August, but I would just ask if we could uh, adjourn the meeting tonight in his memory. <coughs> we'll do that after we have member statements. Anybody else? Seeing none, we're adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>